Hey everyone, I'm back. So for a while now I've been talking about doing a deck tag for my Admiral Beckett Brass deck, and that day has finally arrived. So today we'll be talking about Admiral Beckett Brass. So this is uh, my newest deck actually, and I found that I like this deck a lot so far. This deck is a lot of fun to play. It's a little bit similar to the Sig deck that I did a deck tag for a little while ago. However, that deck is more control oriented I would say whereas this is more of a tempo deck it definitely plays a lot more creatures and also one thing about building this deck that was really satisfying actually was that uh, I found I had almost all of the cards for it already just in my collection typically when I build a new deck I would have to go and buy a bunch of single cards online but uh, over the past year or so I've been doing some some box opening videos and uh, it just kind of so happened that the, the sets that I opened had a lot of cards that were that are good for this deck, like uh, Rivals of Ixlon, for example, and also the newest set, Commander Legends, definitely has a pirate theme to it. Uh, so this version that I have built here, uh, it's not a fully powered up deck. It doesn't have like Mana Crypt and uh, Dual Lands and things like that. But at the same time, it's also, I wouldn't say it's a budget deck because it does have some fairly valuable cards in it. So, I don't know, somewhere in between powered and budget, uh, I'm not exactly sure what to call it, but uh, that's what it is. So let's take a look at uh, Beckett Brass here, see what she does. So this is a Grixis colored commander, blue, black, red. It costs four converted mana cost. It's a legendary human pirate, a 3-3. It says other pirates you control get plus one, plus one. And also at the beginning of your end step, gain control of target non-land permanent controlled by a player who was dealt combat damage by three or more pirates this turn. So, the first ability is cool, but that's not really what I'm interested in this card for. What I'm playing this for is mainly the second ability. And there's a couple of key points to take note of here, is that uh, you can take control of any non-land permanent, so not just creatures, but also the damage has to be dealt by combat damage. So what we're going to want to be doing with this deck is uh, putting a lot of pirates into play that are ideally evasive, and attacking one opponent with three or more of them each turn. I mean, if you can attack two opponents with three each turn, so you would need at least six pirates, that would be cool too, but I don't see that happening too often. So anyway, that's what, what Beckett Press does. First, we'll take a look at the creatures, see how, how we're going to make that work. So starting off with the one drops, we got Fanatical Firebrand. This is a pretty great pirate. It's a 1-1 one, one with haste, so uh, the haste is quite important because you want to be, uh, you know, getting in damage with three or more pirates. And also it's quite useful because you can just uh, sack this to do one damage to anything. I think anyone that has played standard over the past year or two knows that this card is good. So we're playing it because it's a pirate. Next up we've got Impulsive Pilferer. This is a new card from Commander Legends. It's actually my favorite card from the set. Uh, I did a box battle with Vex MTG a little while ago, and uh, I was able to come out victorious in that box battle, and one of the conditions of that uh, was that I got to choose a card from his box, so I actually chose Impulsive Pilferer just because it's my favorite card. Um, but this actually works really well in this deck. It's, uh, it's a one-drop pirate for one, so that's what we want. But also, when it dies, you create a treasure token, and it has the Encore ability. So you can pay four exile it from your graveyard and create three copies of it. Well, one copy for each opponent, so likely three. And those are attacking each of your opponents. Uh, but the thing is, those are all going to be, uh, those are all going to die at the end of the turn. And when they die, you're going to get a treasure for each. So you get three treasures. So this can uh, help you out early on with some ramp and get you possibly three more treasures later in the game. Spectral Sailor. This is another one that you might know from Standard. This one's pretty great. Another one drop is evasive. It has flying and flash, and you can pay four mana to draw a card. Siren Storm Tamer from a couple standards ago. Uh, this one's pretty sweet. It also is a one drop with flying, and you can pay blue and sack it to counter a spell or ability that targets you or a creature you control. So just the four one drops there. And getting into the two drops, we've got Wily Goblin. This is another one of my favorite cards. It seems that I have a thing for Pirate Goblins. But uh, it's just a 1-1 one, one for two, but when it comes into play, you get a treasure token. So that can be very useful, actually, uh, just to play this on turn two. It puts a body into play that you can uh, attack with to potentially trigger Admiral Beckett Press. 
and use the treasure to either ramp or fix your mana. Got a Kite Sail Freebooter. It's an evasive pirate, 1-2 with flying. When it enters the battlefield, you can uh, choose a non-creature, non-land card from one of your opponent's hands and exile it until this leaves play. Time Stream Navigator. This card is pretty cool. It's a, uh, you know, a 1-1 one, one for 2, so not great. However, being just a 2-drop pirate is useful. But also, you can potentially take an extra turn with this. If you have the City's Blessing, you can pay 4 mana and tap it, put it on the bottom of your library, and take an extra turn. So it's a pretty great pirate to have. Thieving Skydiver. This is not a pirate, however, I think it's still pretty much perfect for this deck because it is a cheap evasive creature, but also uh, with this kicker ability, you can be taking your opponent's mana rocks or any kind of big artifacts they have, anything that could be problematic. Uh, I like this card a lot and I see myself playing it in pretty much any blue deck that I have. There's this Daring Saboteur. Uh, it's a 2-1 for two and you can pay three mana to have it not, uh, not be able to be blocked this turn. When it deals combat damage to a player, you can draw a card, and if you do, discard a card. So this one, I've kind of gone back and forth on this. There are a couple of cards that uh, I would consider playing in place of this. I'm just not quite sure which one I want to be playing yet. There's this. There's also the black two-drop creature from Ixalan. Uh, I forget what it's called. Fathom Fleet Captain, I think. It's a 2-1. I think a 2-1 with Menace. And when it attacks, you can pay two mana to make a, a pirate token with Menace, if you have another pirate also. So that could potentially go in instead of this. Or there's also these two cards here that I've gone back and forth on also. Uh, any, any one of these I feel I could go in this slot. Right now I've got this card. But I could see myself playing either of these ones also. Dire Fleet Daredevil is a good cheap pirate. Saw a little bit of play in standard. It's a 2-1 with first strike, and it's sort of similar to a Snapcaster Mage, where we get to play a card out of the graveyard. When it enters the battlefield, you can exile an instant or sorcery from an opponent's graveyard, and you can uh, you can cast that card this turn. Warkite Marauder. It's another cheap evasive pirate, and it has a quite a useful ability. When it attacks, you can have a uh, Target creature defending player controls lose all abilities and have base power toughness 0-1 till the end of turn. So that can really help you get through with uh, all three of the pirates that you need. Because one thing that can be a problem with this deck is that uh, your opponent could just block one of your pirates and then you won't be able to trigger back at press. But this can help you out with that because it makes you know the creatures 0-1s with no abilities. So even if they have like Death Touch or Indestructible or something, they just lose those abilities. There's this Departed Deckhand. This is another one where it could be potentially replaced by one of these cards or the, the one from Ixalan, the black one. Uh, but it's a 2-mana, two 2-2 two, two evasive creature. It can't be blocked except by spirits. Uh, and also I can pay 4 mana to have a creature I control not be blocked except by spirits this turn. So it seems pretty useful to me. I mean, this is evasive and it can make something else evasive. So... So the two things it has going for it to potentially help trigger Admiral Beckett Press. Moving up the curve onto the three drops, we've got Malcolm Keen-Eyed Navigator. This card is very good for this deck. It's a new one from Commander Legends. It's a 2-2 two -two flyer for three. It says whenever one or more pirates you control deal damage to your opponents, you create a treasure token for each opponent dealt damage. So that means if you have three pirates, and each one of them deals damage to an opponent, you're going to get three treasures. So this can really help for fixing your mana or ramping you if you need that. Got this Coastline Marauders. This card is really cool. It's a 0-3 for three mana. It has Trample, and whenever it attacks, it gets plus one plus zero until end of turn for each land defending player controls. And it also has Encore. So this can actually be kind of a win condition. Because uh, chances are early in the game it's probably going to do nothing. Maybe it'll get in for a bit of damage. It has trample, so it is evasive, so it can help trigger Admiral Beckett Press. But this could just sit in your graveyard for a while. And then later on in the game you can encore this. And, you know, maybe your opponents have like 10 lands in play, or even more than that. And this is going to get a big boost in power. 
and it has trample too so it's going to get in a lot of damage on each of your opponents and one thing with the uh, encore on this there's a few creatures with encore in this deck and there are also a few cards that allow you to discard cards so if anything has encore you could potentially just discard it uh, to the graveyard and get the, the value with encore later on Ruin Raider. I like this card a lot. I played this in Standard, actually. When this was in Standard, I played a blue-black Pirates deck, and it was actually pretty decent. Like, it wasn't a Tier 1 deck, but uh, I did have some success with it in uh, some fairly large tournaments. Anyway, with this one, it's a 3-2 for 3. It has raids, so at the beginning of your end step, if you attacked with a creature this turn, reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand. You lose life, you lose two of the cards, converted mana cost. Uh, so this can help you a lot with getting card advantage. If you reveal a land, you don't even take any damage. And also, it is a pirate, so if it deals damage to an opponent, it could potentially help trigger Admiral Becca Brass's ability. We've got this Trove Tracker. This is another creature with Encore ability, so this is a 2-2 for 3. And when it dies, you draw a card. So, you know, 2-2 for 3 is not great. Also, uh, you don't draw a card unless it dies, so it would be ideally better if it drew a card when it came into play. But with this... Uh, it's another one that you can just discard if you want to and use the Encore later on. Or even just, you know, play it as a 2-2 for 3. It gets a pirate body into play. And if you need to uh, attack with it to uh, force through some damage and your opponent blocks it, you'll be drawing a card. So it's not great, but overall I feel like there's enough value in this card to warrant playing it. Hull Breacher. This card is all the hotness right now, and I was fortunate enough to get one in one of my boxes of Commander Legends. So if you don't know what it does, it's a 3-2 for 3. Merfolk Pirate with Flash it says if an opponent would draw a card except for the first one they draw on each of their draw steps. Instead, you create a treasure token. So this card is amazing. It sees play in multiple formats, and it is perfect for this deck. Corsair Captain. This is a new card also from Jumpstart. This card is pretty sweet. It's a 2-2 for 3. It's a pirate lord, so it gives all our pirates plus one, plus one. But also what I really like about it is that it, when it enters the battlefield, you create a treasure. So it's similar to having another copy of uh, Wily Goblin, which is one of my favorite cards. So I like this card too. We've got a Thassa, God of the Sea. This card is pretty sweet for this deck. Uh, even if you aren't using this as a creature, like having this indestructible enchantment that lets you scry every turn is quite useful. And also, for paying just two mana, you can have one of your creatures be unblockable for a turn, which is exactly what this deck wants to be doing. So I think this card is pretty great in this deck. Captain Lannery Storm. This is another one of my favorite pirates. I've tried playing this in so many decks, uh, in Standard and Historic. I I've always been surprised that it didn't see play, but uh, I, I always try to put it in decks. It is in one of my Pioneer decks too. I did a deck tech for that. You can take a look at that if you want. But it's a 2-2 for 3. It has haste. It's a pirate. Uh, it says whenever it attacks, you create a treasure. And whenever you sacrifice a treasure, it gets plus 1 plus 0 till end of turn. So what I really like about this is that uh, it gets you a treasure right away because it has haste. And also it makes the treasure when it attacks, not when it deals damage. So if you need to, you can just attack this into something and get a treasure if you just really need that treasure but also it says whenever you sacrifice a treasure it gets plus one plus zero uh that doesn't have to be when you sacrifice a treasure for mana there are some other cards in this deck that require just sacrificing an artifact so treasures are artifacts so if we sacrifice those two other abilities this still gets plus one plus zero till end of turn got a glint horn buccaneer this card, uh, it's a 2-4 for 3 with haste, so it's got a little bit of extra toughness there. Uh, it says whenever you discard a card, it deals 1 damage to each opponent, notably each. And also, you can pay 1 in a red and discard a card and draw a card. You activate this ability only if this is attacking. So, this card, it just kind of provides a lot of value for this deck. It doesn't do any one thing in particular that the deck needs, but uh, there's a lot of good stuff on here. So, you know, it's a 3-mana creature with haste, so that can be good for helping to trigger back in brass. Uh, this is one of the cards that allows us to discard cards, so there is a small discarding theme in this deck, and also, whenever we do discard something, we can get in some extra damage. And this can also help us to uh, filter our hand a little bit by discarding and drawing some cards. I've got a few of the land spells from Zendikar Rising in here. This is one of them, Glass Pool Mimic. 
So I'll put these aside to have them kind of with the lands and the spells, but uh, a lot of these, like Glass Bowl Mimic, I kind of feel like if you're in the color, it's worth just playing it just because it's a land and a spell. Uh, so this one, yeah, it's pretty good in this deck. I mean, I'm playing a lot of creatures and this can copy any one of them. So uh, this definitely, I think, is a good inclusion. An Amphin Mutineer. This is a really cool card from Commander Legends. It's a 3-3 pirate for 4 mana. It says when it enters the battlefield, you can exile up to one target non-Salamander creature, and that creature's controller creates a 4-3 blue Salamander creature token. So it's kind of like a Pongify on a creature. However, it also has this Encore ability, which is super good on this creature because later in the game you can be Encoring this and exiling one thing for each of your opponents. It's super good. Got this Breaches Brazen Plunderer. It has Menace for 4 mana, it's a 3-3. Three, three. It says whenever one or more of your pirates... Uh, one or, whenever one or more pirates you control deal damage to your opponents, Exile the top card of each of those opponent's libraries. You may play those cards this turn and spend mana as though it were mana of any color. So this is just a, you know, a good value creature. It allows you to get some stuff off the top of your opponent's decks. Uh, get a bit of card advantage. I like this card. Pitiless Plunderer. This is one that you might have seen from my Rivals of Ixalan videos. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty sweet card. It's a 1-4 four for 4. So not great stats, but it has a bit of toughness there. And whenever another creature you control dies, you create a treasure. So there's quite a few cards in here that create treasures, you might have noticed. And uh, you'll see as we keep going how we're going to be using those treasures. I mean, using them just to, to get mana is perfectly fine. But there are some other uses that we have for them as well. Actually, here's one of those uses right now. Uh, Pia and Kieran Nalar. This is another card from my... Uh, my Pioneer deck that also has Captain Lannery Storm, so that deck has kind of worked its way into this deck also. Uh, this is not a pirate, but I think it's worth playing in here. So it's a 2-2 two, two for 4. It's a human artificer. It says when it enters the battlefield, you create two 1-1 one, one Thopters. Those are flying artifact creatures. But also, you can pay 3 mana, 2 in a red, sacrifice an artifact, sacrifice any artifact, not just a Thopter, and this does 2 damage to any target. So since we're making so many treasure tokens, this card I think works really well in this deck because we can just be sacrificing those treasures to be picking off bonus creatures or even just burn an opponent out with this. Uh, I like I think this card works pretty well in this deck despite not being a pirate. We've got a Phyrexian Metamorph in here. This goes in a lot of commander decks, uh, so it doesn't go with pirate synergy or anything. However, it kind of does because it can come into play as a copy of any artifact or creature on the battlefield, so I can copy any pirate I want. Uh, there's just so many different things you can do with this card. I feel like this is a pretty good inclusion. And also, it is an artifact creature, so there are some cards that we have, like Pia and Kira Nalar, that can take advantage of having artifacts. There is a Merchant Raiders. This is another new card. It's a 4-mana 2-4 human pirate. Whenever Merchant Raiders or another pirate enters the battlefield under your control, tap up to one target creature. That creature doesn't untap during his controller's untap step as long as you control Merchant Raiders. So this is kind of removal on a creature. Uh, it's pretty sweet because it triggers for itself, so you get to tap something down right away. And any time you play another pirate, you get to tap down another creature. So if you can... Like, this is going to be a removal magnet for sure, but if you can protect it, you can get a lot of value out of this creature. There's also Hostage Taker. This card saw quite a bit of play in Standard also. I think this card is possibly the best pirate. It's one of the best pirates. Anyway, it's a 2-3 for 4. When it enters the battlefield, you can exile an artifact or creature until this leaves the battlefield. And you can cast this card as long as it remains exiled. You can spend any mana, or you can spend mana as though it were any color to cast it. So for this, uh, I mean, you can be stealing any, any creature or artifact from your opponent. And you can just cast it, so after you've cast it, even if Hostage Taker dies, you still get to keep the card you cast. It's just, this is a very good pirate. Going up to the 5 drop slot, we've got Coercive Recruiter. This is a 4-3 for 5. Whenever Coercive Recruiter or another pirate enters the battlefield under your control, gain control of target creature until end of turn, untap that creature until end of turn it gains haste. It also becomes a pirate in addition to its other types, so that could be relevant too. Actually, that is quite relevant. 
with Admiral Beckett Press. Uh, this card is, provides a lot of value. I mean, you're playing lots of pirates. You can be using this as a potentially more than one threatened effect each turn. Uh, this, this card is perfect for this deck. I'm going to shift these cards around a little bit, make some more room. Put this guy down here. It's here. All right, so another five drop. Port Razor. Uh, this is a 4-4 four, four for five. Whenever Port Razor deals combat damage to a player, untap each creature you control. After this combat phase, there is an additional combat phase. Port Razor can't attack a player and has already attacked this turn. So this is one of the cards that gives you extra combat phases, but it gives you that on a pirate body, so we're playing it. So you might have noticed a kind of glaring omission from this deck and the creatures uh, in the two drop slot, which is Dockside Extortionist. And I mean, definitely you should be playing that card in this deck, but uh, I just don't have one. So that's why it's not here. Well, actually I do have one, but it's just not with me at the moment. So uh, when, I, when I do have my copy of it, it's gonna be going in this deck. Uh, so moving on to the Planeswalkers, we've got a couple of those. There's Dak Faden. This card I think is kind of perfect for this deck. I mean, he's a, just a three mana Planeswalker, so he can play it early. Basically what you want to be doing with this is stealing mana rocks. You want to go, uh, you know, turn one and two, whatever. Uh, your opponent's turn, they play a mana rock. Uh, you go turn three, steal their mana rock. Uh, that's what I see this doing most of the time, and if that's what this does, I'm happy with it. Also, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a little bit of room. So let's let's make a pile for these creatures here because there are quite a few other cards to go through. Planeswalkers, creatures. So this other planeswalker, and Graph the Flame Chain. Um, this is one that I'm kind of going back and forth on. It's a good card, but. I might see myself cutting it if there's something better to put in here. So it's five mana, comes in with four loyalty, can plus one to have each opponent discard a card and lose two life. Each opponent is relevant there, because if it was just one, then kind of wouldn't be very good. Um, minus three, that's what we're going to be doing this most of the time, I feel like, is you can gain control of a creature till the turn, untap it, gains haste, uh, and then at the end of the turn you sacrifice it. Wait, at the beginning next end step, you sacrifice it if it has CMC 3 or less. So typically, uh, I see myself using this just to uh, play it in minus 3 to do, maybe take a 3 drop, attack with it, and then sacrifice it. That kind of seems good enough to me. So, you know, I'll, I'll try this out and see uh, maybe if it's worth keeping, maybe not. But good thing it has going for it is that it is a picture of pirate, so thematically it fits anyway, right? And there is another Planeswalker that I was playing in here for a little while, but I ended up cutting it, which was Jace Cunning Castaway. Um, I was playing it just, I mean, thematically it fits because, you know, he looks like a pirate. Uh, it doesn't have any pa actual pirate synergy though, but it seemed like it would be pretty good for this deck because this is a tempo deck, and with this Jace, uh, it's a tempo kind of card. You know, usually what you're doing is you're going to plus one. So whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat to damage to a player, you can loot, draw, and discard. Um, and then this can actually be a win con because you can quickly ultimate it by just uh, you know plus one a couple of times and then start making copies of it. But despite that, um, it just didn't seem like it did quite enough for me, so I cut it. But I did try this card out a little bit. Um, so that's it for the creatures and planeswalkers. Next. Got some removal. Got a Blood Chief's Thirst. It's just a, you know, pretty good removal spell. You can use it for just one mana or four mana to destroy any creature or planeswalker. Pongify. Nice one mana instant speed removal. A Braid. Can destroy a creature or an artifact. Well, it can do three damage to a creature. Feed the Swarm. Pretty sweet new card in black. Uh, finally gives it the ability to interact with enchantments. So I see this card being quite useful in this deck. Got a Slaughter Pact in here. This is a card that, uh, you know, doesn't go in every deck, but uh, I feel like it's pretty useful in this one. Uh, just being able to pay the zero to destroy a creature, uh, that could make the difference of potentially triggering Admiral Beckett Brass or not. So kind of like this card in this deck. 
Got a fiery cannonade. Almost all of our creatures are pirates, so this kind of just two, does two damage to, to each creature we don't control at instant speed. Seems pretty good to me. Got a blasphemous act in here. Uh, I mean, it's super popular in Commander. Um, this could end up killing a lot of our creatures, but uh, I feel like it's still worth playing just if we see ourselves in a bad situation. This can be, you know, a one mana board wipe potentially. Here's another one of the land spells, the Hagra Mauling. So this is another removal spell that we've got, which can also be a land. Put that over here. Cyclonic Rift, we're playing blue, so we're playing it. Uh, that's it for the removal. This is, we've got a few counter spells also. So playing this one, the, the spell land, Dwari Disruption. Uh, I feel like the opportunity cost for having this in the deck is pretty low and, you know, even though it is just counter a spell unless it's control, it plays one. Uh, I could see this being useful. So we've got another one of these. Uh, just got a negate in here. You know, it's a cheap counter spell. This could just be straight up counter spell. But actually, uh, having double blue, it, is, like, it isn't a given that we're going to have double blue for counter spells. So sometimes negate can actually be better. So I'm playing negate. Got a spell swindle. Uh, this card I think is pretty sweet. It's you know it's five mana counter spell, so it's expensive, but we can be getting a lot of treasure tokens with this, uh, and we can be using those you know just to get mana or potentially sack to Pia and Kirin Nalar. Or uh, coming up shortly, you'll see some other kind of things that we're going to be doing with treasures. Costly plunder. Uh, you know it's instant speed uh, card advantage. Uh, it's similar to Village Rites, except for it costs one more mana, so that kind of sucks. However, we can sacrifice an artifact if we want, and since we could potentially be having a lot of treasures hanging out, uh, I like this card as a, uh, you know, it's just instant speed draw two. Chart of course, some more card draw. We have lots of little creatures we're attacking with, so chart of course seems pretty good. So this is Valakut Awakening. Uh, that's another one that I'm playing just because the opportunity cost seems so low just to play this in place of a land. You know, it could be quite useful. This is one of my favorite cards that I've tried playing in uh, in a lot of decks also. And usually I end up cutting it and I don't want to cut this, but it's another one that I could see myself cutting at some point. But I, I, I like Pirate's Village. I mean, uh, it's four mana. You have to discard a card to cast it, but you draw two cards. And uh, also you get to create two treasure tokens. So this can, you know, it can ramp you and fix your mana and stuff. I just like this card. Got an Agadim's Awakening. It's kind of perfect for this deck. We have lots of small creatures. We can just play this in place of a Swamp or something quite easily. Thrilling Encore. This card... Ever since this card was printed, um, I've wanted to play it, but I just haven't been able to find a home for it. So I'm playing it in this deck, and while it doesn't really fit thematically with the deck, I think it still could be quite useful. You know, it's a five mana instant, so that is a lot of mana to have at instant speed, but put onto the battlefield under your control all creature cards and all graveyards that were from the battlefield this turn. So since we're playing a lot of creatures, we can be some susceptible to board wipes, but also, you know, we can kind of take advantage of our opponent's cards. If an opponent's playing some big creatures and maybe another opponent has to play a board wipe, we could just take those creatures after they die from the board wipe, so... I don't know, I, I like this card, and uh, I just think that it's fun to play in this deck. Got some enchantments here. Curse of Opulence. This card is pretty cool. I mean, it's just a one-mana enchantment that can be getting us a lot of treasure tokens. Our opponents can get treasure tokens too, but that's okay. I mean, we'll uh, share the wealth a little bit with this. Got a Storm the Vault. I kind of feel like this card is almost made for this deck. I mean, uh, we have lots of small creatures that we're attacking with. And we want to be making treasures, so this card is kind of perfect. And then it also flips over into this uh, pseudo Tolarian Academy, which is pretty great. Bident of Thassa. This is another card that's kind of perfect for this deck. Each time a creature we control deals combat damage to a player, we can draw a card. It also has this second ability, which I don't see being super useful a lot of the time, but. In the event where we do want an ability like this, we've got it. Reconnaissance mission. 
kind of a second copy of uh, Biden of Tassa. However, if we don't need this or maybe more mana screwed or something, we can just cycle it away. So here's the really big payoff for all of the treasure tokens that we're making is Revel and Riches. Uh, it's an alternate win condition. It fuels itself. It's good just by, you know, playing the game. You play this and just as the game plays out, you'll get value because, uh, you know, you'll be killing your opponent's creatures and your opponents will be killing other opponent's creatures and you'll be getting treasure. This is one of my favorite cards also. I also play this in my SIG deck just because uh, I feel like it's good enough just on its own. But uh, yeah, with this and all of our treasures, it's an alternate win con, provides a lot of value and also with, where is it? Spell Swindle? This is sort of a two card combo right here. Uh, moving on to the artifacts, got some ramp in Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Talisman of Creativity, Sky Diamond, and Chromatic Lantern. So quite a bit of artifact ramp here, and that's because we're playing Grixis colors, so we don't have access to green. So we kind of need to rely on artifact ramp instead of just land ramp. Uh, we do have, you know, lots of treasure tokens, but... Uh, in the event where we can't make treasures, we really want to have these cards. Got some equipment too, Mask of Memory. This card is pretty sweet because we have lots of small creatures that are evasive, so this can be getting us a lot of card advantage and filtering. There's also a Sword of the Animist. This card, uh, the type of deck that this is, uh, you know, a small creature tempo deck, feels perfect for Sword of the Animist because like I said before, we don't have access to land ramp because we're not playing green. So with this, we can be getting basically a free rampant growth every turn, which is very, very good. And I feel like a, a lot of decks are now beginning to play Sword of the Animus just, just by looking at the, the price trajectory of it too. I mean, it's not exactly a cheap card anymore. So anyway, this, this I feel like is another card that's kind of perfect for this deck. Got a Sword of Feast and Famine. Uh, I mean, this is potentially the the best equipment right and we're playing lots of small evasive creatures so this card seems pretty sweet for this deck that's it for the uh, equipment there's a couple more artifacts though there's treasure map i like this card a lot um this is another one that i've tried to play in so many decks uh it can it, like it's such a great early play and also it can ramp you a lot so you know you play this on tier two or three you can start scrying to uh you know fix the top of your deck but then when it flips it's just it's such a big ramp turn because not only do you get this extra land by flipping over you also get the three treasure tokens and this card in this deck in particular seems quite good because we make so many treasures we can be sacrificing those to treasure cove every turn just to draw an extra card each turn so treasure map i like that a lot in this deck i mean it should be good for pirates right it's a treasure map also, there's this card, which I think is maybe a little bit of an unusual inclusion, but there's Time Sieve. So this is another one of the cards that really takes advantage of having a lot of artifacts. We can tap this, sack five artifacts, and take an extra turn. So this, uh, Revel and Riches, what else? Treasure Map, and in here, there's the Pia and Kira Nalar. These, these four cards are mainly what we're using the, the our treasure tokens for. Outside of uh, just using them uh, to get mana, we can use them for these cards. And I thought about going more in on the artifact uh, artifact theme with this and potentially playing something like Marionette Master, but um, I don't know. I feel like these four, just these four cards is, is uh, probably enough to, to make use of uh, all of our treasures if we don't want to just use them for uh, for mana. So we got those. So that's it for all of the, the spells. Got a few lands in here. So there are the five uh, spell lands. And two, two utility lands. We've got Castle Vantress and Castle Lockthwain. Both of these, I mean... This one gets you actual card advantage. This one gets you very good filtering. So both of these I feel like are worth playing. And then the rest are just uh, dual lands and basics. So got a Polluted Delta, Fabled Passage, Exotic Orchard. This one is a bit of an interesting inclusion, Spire of Industry. 
uh, just because we have quite a lot of artifacts and quite a lot of cards that make treasures. Uh, I feel like Spire of Industry will be turned on a lot of the time. So at that point, it's kind of a city of brass, which is worth playing. And what else? Path of Ancestry and Command Tower. Those are uh, our lands that can get us all three colors that we need. Some more duels. Shivan Reef, Sulphur Falls, Riverglide Pathway, Fiery Islet, Steam Vents, Cascade Bluffs. Those are the blue red ones. The, what's it called? Is it lands? There's the blue black ones. Dark Water Catacombs, Clear Water Pathway, Sunken Ruins, and Watery Grave. And some Rakdos lands. Blood Crypt, Graven Cairns, Foreboding Ruins, Canyon Slough, Luxury Suite, Dragon Skull, Summit. And then for basics, we've got three of each. Because uh, I feel like this is uh, enough basics where, like, we, we need to have enough where we're having things like Dragon Skull Summit come into play untapped. Uh, what else? Foreboding Ruins, and we need basic land types for that. Um, also, we have. Sword of the Animist, which uh, that can only search up basics. So we need, you know, a fair amount of basics to make that card actually good. And uh, nine seems like a you know decent number to me. All right, so that is the Admiral Beckett Brass deck. Uh, like I said, I think this deck is a lot of fun. Uh, it's you know a tempo-y, small creature kind of deck. You can be taking advantage of having a lot of artifacts, you can be taking extra turns with a couple of cards, you have an alternate win con and revel and riches, you can be stealing your opponent's stuff with Admiral Beckett Brass, so each day, each game can be uh, you know pretty different, because it really depends on what your opponent's playing. Uh, anyway though, uh, if you're still watching, thanks for watching, it'd be cool if you can like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you play Becca Press and you have uh, some different inclusions, or uh, you know maybe you think so there's some uh, some better options for cards that I'm playing, or just you have any kind of comments or critique, I would be happy to hear. But uh, otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.